Ryan Day has found Tony Alford's replacement. You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. One thing we preached when Tony Alford left Ohio State to go coach at Michigan was patience. It might take some time for Ryan Day to find the right guy to replace Tony Alford. It took some time, and they have finally found his replacement. Welcome in, Buckeye fans, to a Tuesday edition of Locked on Buckeyes here on Tuesday, April 2nd in the year 2024. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast, and I'd like to thank you for making Locked on Buckeyes your first listen or first watch every day. One thing we know about when you lose a coach, everyone is anxiously awaiting and pursuing and pushing the coach to make a decision quickly. Do it on my timetable. Don't do it on your timetable. And one thing we know about Ryan Day, especially during this most recent coaching search, search, he wasn't going to do it on anyone else's timetable but his. And ultimately, taking his time, being impatient, has been great for the Buckeyes, and they found the, a great candidate, a great man, to replace Tony Alford. That is Carlos Lachlan, former Oregon running back coach, is replacing Tony Alford to be the Buckeyes' new running back coach. Interesting tie there. Oregon's a new Big Ten team who Ohio State plays this year. Tony Alford goes to the team's biggest rival. Very interesting how these pieces have been moved around. But for Carlos Lachlan, there are things that he needs from Ohio State and that Ohio State needs from him. Number one, you need him to be all in, to buy into Ohio State's way of doing things, the culture. But also, number two, the players need to buy into Carlos Lachlan. Now, one thing I did when I was reading and digging about this man, when Pete Thamel was the one that uh, had the tweet that went around, but 247 Sports, as he said, Pete Thamel did, had the report first. Carlos Lachlan is a guy that has been at Oregon for a couple of years. He was at Western Kentucky, I do believe, before that one year as their running back coach. And then he was a couple years in Oregon as the running back coach before coming to Ohio State. But one thing you know with Lachlan, he has a formula that is going to work, or that should work. That's one thing that is great. He has a formula that people believe, that I believe, that a lot of people believe. If you do what you did at Oregon, it will work at Ohio State. And the Buckeyes will have the production to show for, the numbers to show for, everything that goes into showing and proving that your formula works at Ohio State. Last year, the Oregon Ducks had the third best uh, yards per carry average in the country, not just in the Pac-12, in the entire country at 5.91 yards per pop. Uh, in 22, 5.52 yards a pop. It's number sixth in the entire country. And he's dealing with guys that are not, I'm just going to be honest, Oregon fans might not like this, but really I don't care. Bucky Irving, do you think he's better than Quinshawn Judkins? Probably not. Do you think that Noah Whittington is better than Quinshawn Jokins or Travion Henderson? Probably not. Do you think Jordan James is better than one of them? Probably not. So all we're saying is Oregon does not have the better running backs between what Ohio State has now and what Oregon had in 2023 and 2022. So the top two backs at Ohio State could potentially be and will probably be the best duo in the country in the conference, one of the best duos in the country. Man. Those guys are not better than what Ohio State currently has, and they bought in, and Lachlan's formula worked. So only imagine when you have Ohio State's offensive of line, it's not intact, not sold on all five guys being in the spots they currently are. I honestly would, would not be upset if they flip Montgomery and Fryer. I think Fryer might be better as a guard than a tackle. I don't think he's the best out there in space and out there on an island, but uh, they're working through those things right now. Justin Fry even said he's waiting to find the five, waiting to find the five guys, the five. When he finds the five, he'll know it. Still waiting for it. And I think you might have the five there, just might have to shuffle the pieces around to get things the way that they need to be. But Ohio State's offensive line will be improved this year. I firmly believe that. The running back play, if everybody stays healthy, will be improved. It's all hinging upon health. If the Buckeyes were healthy last year in the running back room and the year before, trust me, the running back conversations we had on this show would be a whole lot different. And I think you believe that, too. I think you believe that the running back conversations would be different if everybody stayed healthy. But if you get buy-in from the players, you see that what he's doing in Oregon, over there in Eugene, the Pacific Northwest, seems like it's far, far, far away. 
he's doing it there with players that aren't as good as what Ohio State has. It should work in Columbus, but the players got to buy in and he has to buy in. If everybody buys in and everyone's on the same page, this could be a freeze. It could be a nightmare for opposing defenses because they have no way to stop the running ba- the running game. Now, when it comes to running backs, we always pinpoint the running game. No problem with it. They get the ball. They tote the rock. They need to go out there and do that thing consistently. That's great. That's cool. That's a part of their job. It's not their only part of their job. Pass pro two. And I do think, now we know currently the pass protection of the running backs is reported from the uh, scrimmage over the weekend. Pass protection wasn't the best. Uh, Of course, they got some defense blitzing like crazy. And, of course, sometimes those guys blitzing are better than you are at pass protection as a running back. And so that's kind of how things went there. But I do think, though, he'll help in pass protection, too. When you have the mindset, you're going to talk and dive into the mindset that Lachlan has and how it's going to be able to be implemented and how it's going to be able to help and benefit the Buckeyes running backs, assuming everybody buys in. But, man, with his mindset, it's going to work. If he, like this, I say, I say it, it's going to. It should work. It should. I personally don't know enough about him yet to come out here and say, he is going to do a big, amazing thing. I, I don't know. I, I don't have enough. The one thing that I think is very interesting about this, going to close up with this, we're talking about this here topic, about the buy-in. Carlos Lachlan got a two-year contract when he was hired by Ohio State. The most recent contract offer that Tony Alford had by the Buckeyes was a one-year deal. So if you're sitting up here saying that Alford's supposed to be done at Ohio State, why even offer him a one-year deal? If you're offering him a one-year deal, and of course, he has a family, he has kids, he is married, his wife wants some security. It's not about what happened previously with the financials. It's about what's happening right now. And I understand and I do believe that, hey, if if I've been here for a long time, had some really good success, yes, the past couple of years have been a little bit different, but the guys have been hurt, which have hindered how successful these guys can be. Great. That's, a, that's not a narrative. That's not just like a talking point. That is context. Injuries hurt how productive the Buckeyes running backs would have been over the past couple of years. That is the truth. Now, 2020, if you go back to 2020, that's a whole different ball game. Because you start in Master Teague, and I don't know whose idea it was to start Master Teague at the beginning, beginning of the season, but start Master Teague late in the year. Um, Trey Servant got loose, got hot, had a great run at the end of the season. And ultimately, I think the 2020 running backs would have been a whole lot different and would have been a great little boost for Tony Alford. But it's what have you done for me lately? He's done a great job of developing running backs and developing talent. Think about what Dallin Hayton did when he started in the game because the Buckeyes running backs were so hurt, were so depleted. He had to be put up there on front street. He did a phenomenal job. Who helped him with that? Who coached him up? Tony Alford. The one-year deal from him seemed a little bit odd. The two-year deal for Lachlan does not seem odd. It seems just right. Even if it was two plus one, two years, and if you do things right, we'll automatically give you a third. I, that would have been fine with me. But the one-year deal for all for Alford. Definitely did not sit well with me. What does sit well with me is that if Lachlan buys in, if these players buy in, this should be a breeze for the Buckeyes running backs in the upcoming season. Now, you've heard me mention that Lachlan only has three years of running back coaching experience in college. Will that be a problem? I'll answer that question next. This episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. 
two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. I think that says it all right there. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked on College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Locked on College to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on the YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If I'm Ryan Day and I'm trying to find someone to replace Tony Alford, who was at Ohio State for nine years, who was hired by Urban Meyer initially when he first when he got to Columbus, I would be trying to weigh out my options. Do I want a seasoned coach, someone that's been coaching this position 10 plus years, or do I want someone that's only been doing it for two or three or maybe five that is not as seasoned, but someone that I trust that is backed by the people around him and has a track record of success. That is a very abnormal thought to have. Because normally you think about Ohio State, you think about, hey, you could go out there and get anybody. I mean, you can. There are guys that will turn you down because of the job they're at previously or because of their certain place in their career or maybe they don't want to go to Ohio State. That happens. It's okay. I know Ohio State is that dude. And I recently on the show talking about them brands and how some schools are them brands and some schools are not. Ohio State is definitely one of them brands. And with them being one of them brands, it definitely seems odd if somebody were to turn down a an opportunity to coach at Ohio State, but some circumstances dictate why certain decisions are made. It's not a problem. It's just life. And so when it comes to Carlos Lachlan, I don't think his lack of success of being a full-time art running backs coach in college is going to be a hindrance. It also, one, goes back to what I mentioned in the previous segment of the show, but he has been coaching for a long period of time, since 2009. From 2009 to 2022, he spent time at a few high schools in Tennessee from 2009 to 2015. He spent a few years at Memphis, 2017 to 2019, one year at Florida State, one year at Western Kentucky, and two years at Oregon. What is one thing that we have seen? Once he got into coaching, one year he was the offensive coordinator. Another year he was the OC and the DC in high school. Which that right there is very interesting. Think about what it was when you played high school football. Maybe you played or maybe you watch high school football. You know how it is. Third and eight. Offense doesn't get off the field. They throw a pass. It's, it's a it's a quick pass because it needs to be just because of the defense. Um, only get a three-yard gain, fourth and five. You punting comes on. Offense goes off the field. Offense goes on. They sit on the benches on the sideline. The OC comes over. Gets out the whiteboard, gets out the uh, the screen. A lot of schools nowadays, especially the bigger schools, are having the ability to have video and watch film on the sideline from the previous drive. It's just insane how quickly the technology is advancing. Well, that's there. But if you're an OC and a DC, you don't get those whiteboard moments. You don't get to watch the film in game from the previous drive because you got to go back out there and call the plays on the defense. And so that OCDC thing for him when he was at Westwood High School in Tennessee, that is huge. That is big. That is key. But no, I don't think so. One thing he has done from 20, 2009, I keep wanting to say 29, 2009 until 2023, last year, he has worked with people at different levels, had a, a lot on his plate, had a big responsibility, and succeeded while doing so. The one thing that I find interesting, and it goes back to the contract that he got. Now, Jake Diebler, Ohio State head basketball coach, got a five-year deal, first deal that he got at Ohio State. I know Ross Bjork, who is the new AD coming in after Gene Smith retires. I know Ross Bjork was in on that hire. Great. Cool. That is amazing. That's a five-year deal. That's a long period of time. Very long period of time. I would have assumed it would have been a three-year or four-year deal and then reevaluate down the road. No, he got a five-year deal. Great. The one thing for Lachlan is, and I think Ryan Day is more prepared for this than he would have been previously, Lachlan doesn't stay at places very long. It's not a knock on him. I'm not trying to smash or bash a man's name. It's just reality. Lachlan doesn't stay at many places long. One year at Trezant High School as the OC. Two years at Westwood High School as the OC in D.C. 
three years at Manassas High School as the OC, two years as an OC at Cordova High School in Tennessee, then one year, excuse me, three years at Memphis in three separate roles, um, one year at Florida State, one year at Western Kentucky, two years at Oregon. And this is not a knock on him. One thing he said in a recent clip that I saw that we'll dive into in the very next segment, he said, hey, man, I got to fight. I had to claw. I had to work. I had to grind for the things that I am and the places I am, the place I am right now where I'm coaching at Oregon. He said he did it. He said Dan Lanning did it. Well, Coach Lanning is what came out of his mouth. He said, hey, we had to work for what we have to do to get where we are. And I think that that work and that grind is what is motivates him. And you're going to hear it. There are clips going around on the socials. Go on the X or formerly known as Twitter. Go out there. Go on the YouTube. Search Carlos Lachlan interview. And you can see some of it may be post-game with the media. Some of it may be just chit-chat on a podcast. Whatever it may be. So, or a radio show, doesn't matter. You're going to find that this man here is very, very passionate and his path to get to Oregon, the work that he had to put in, he had to grind every day. It made him the coach that he is. And I do believe when it comes to him right now, I don't really care about the lack of experience of him being an RB coach. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't really have the biggest outlook right now and saying this is what's going to happen with him at Ohio State I I can't go that far I don't have enough data and honestly I want to see him coaching at Ohio State I want to see him at the spring game I want to see how he, he interacts and reacts to the fans I want to see how he responds to adversity I want to see what happens when he has to respond to a player getting injured I only bring it up because it's been a big part of the running back room over the past couple of years where if players get hurt I Part of me believes Tony Alford is still here if players don't get hurt over the past couple of years. I firmly believe that, 100%. Now, I'm not saying that him and Ryan Day or him and the other coaches saw uh, were uh, in lockstep and in sync in every decision that was made. I'm not saying that. However, I do think, though, if these guys don't get hurt, you don't think of a movement from Tony Alford. You wouldn't. Why? They're producing. They're getting the job done. And so when I think about Lachlan, I'm cool with where he is. I'm cool with his experience. I'm cool with all that. Normally, a guy with lack of experience, if I said, hey, you only got three years as an RB coach, what is the next thing I am looking for? What did you do before that? Is that your first job? Ooh, okay. You might not be ready for this. And James Laurinaitis, Ryan, they gave him his first opportunity to be an LB coach. A GA at Notre Dame, a GA at Ohio State. And before that, he was, I, no, I believe he hosted a radio show in Columbus, called games on the Big Ten Network, and he was a good broadcaster, good radio host. I enjoyed listening to him on the radio. Well, all of a sudden, he had an ish to coach, and he said, hey, look, I understand. I know my salary. I know I'm about to go down to the very, 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 very bottom to work my way up, and that's what he did in Laronitis. Mac and Weary, another one. Ryan is giving a lot of guys that don't have the, the long season track record of success, just track record in general. An opportunity at Ohio State right now because, one, he trusts them, he believes in them, but also they have a passion for the sport and a passion for that position that Ryan Day believes is perfect for the Buckeyes in 2024. One thing I believe is per perfect for the Buckeyes in 2024 is Carlos Lachlan's mindset about players and what he expects from them when he coaches them. <laughs> Y'all going to like this one. It's coming at you next. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors Passion, Drive, and Patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts, for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. This episode is also brought to you by Billiards Plus. 
Billions Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. Billions Plus also has more cues than anyone in Ohio that can fix your billiards woes in their shop that is on site. Everything you need for in-home and backyard entertainment is at Billiards Plus. They are family-owned and operated, and when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you are going to know. You're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Double Center Drive in Dublin. Thank you for making Locked on Buck, guys. Your first listen every day. If you missed yesterday's bonus episode, go back and check it out. If you're watching us on the YouTube, it is available on the YouTube, on the Locked on Buck Guys podcast playlist, and also on a recruiting updates playlist as well. If you're an audio podcast listener, that show is literally right before the one you're listening to right now. London Merritt and Tarvos Alford, their names are in the title because they headlined the four re- commitments that the Buckeyes received over the weekend in three days, the final three days in the month of March. The Buckeyes closed the month out with a bang on the recruiting trail. You definitely want to check this out. And we'll definitely sprinkle in some extra and bonus episodes every now and then when there's so much news that we can't fit it all in one show. One thing that I do want to fit in this show, this one show before we get up out of here, is, man, Carlos Lachlan. I was doing some digging. I saw it on the X, a clip from him in an interview with some media. Something goes outside of a practice or a game or something like that, and uh, he was pretty fired up. I don't know the question I was asked him, but I only got his response. And let me tell y'all, y'all know how tough I am on coaches. Y'all know how tough I am on players. Y'all know the type of analyst that I am. Some say, some say that I am too tough. Okay, whatever. Oh, well, it ain't going to change. One thing I don't want to change either is this man's mindset, Carlos Lachlan, because he used this phrase, quote, soft batch cookie, end quote. Now, I don't normally say the word soft batch cookie. I do not. But when it came out of his mouth, it had to be here on the show. Because when you when I read this quote, you want to clearly understand why he used the phrase soft batch cookie and the definition and the meaning behind it, quote, I don't coach soft batch cookie. If you a soft batch cookie, you got to get away from around me. And they got a bakery for that. Guess what it's called? The transfer portal. You come here, you're going to fight. You're going to earn everything, end quote. Now, before this, he talked about how, hey, he don't care about no stars. <laughs> he doesn't. I, we talk about this on the show. He's saying the same things we say here. Stars don't mean nothing when you're on the field. High school, hey, you're on the field. I don't care what your stars. Show me what you got. If you're in college, if you got them stars, hey, you, can, you have stars next to your name in, in a database, cool. That doesn't mean anything when you're on the field. And when I think about Carlos Lachlan, he possesses a mindset and a mentality that I want with every coach at Ohio State. No, I'm not the coach. I'm just simply an analyst that comes here five days a week, every Monday through Friday, providing you the Buckeye news and fix you want and need every single day. These are the things you want from a coach. Realizing, look, I ain't about to get hung up on those stars. Please, what am I? Am I a recruiting database? Am I a computer? No, what am I? I am a coach. Coach don't care about them stars. And I think if you were to go out there and poll numerous high school coaches and even college college coaches too, they don't care about the stars. A lot of that is for business. Do you think there'd be so many recruiting databases if this was not a lucrative means to to grade players? Probably not. They could easily say, this guy's a 99.8. Cool. This guy's a 99.4. Cool. It's much more attain. It's much more easy to attain and to work for if you say, oh, you're a four-star, but you can work for that, f- that fifth star. Oh, you got that fifth star? You a dog. Wait, 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 wait. Did you really get that much better? No. Then what changed? I went to a couple camps. Wait a minute. So you went to a couple camps. The right people were there. You did the same thing you were always doing, and now you got a fifth star? Does it make any sense? No, it doesn't. But that's the world we live in. That's the sport. It's very weird. It's very confusing. And I'm not a fan. I am a fan, though. When he said, made this quote, this comment here, you come here, you're going to earn it. 
and he's not going to hand anything to anyone. And this goes back to something we talked about earlier, the mindset. Talking about his lack of success as a running back coach specifically, this man has been coaching since 2009 at a high level, OC, DC, offensive analyst, weight room assistant, director of high school relations, director of high school relations. He's doing a lot of jobs people don't want. Why? Because they're very, it takes time, it takes work, you got to grind. But what is it? He realized to get to where he wants to go, to get, to get the job that he wants to have, he has to do these things. Get good at it. Do it over and over. Go to a new place. Do it there too. Do all these things over and over and over. And what might happen, you might get to the spot you want to be. That soft batch cookie, that's going to be a phrase we're going to use on this show quite a bit. Not all the time, because I don't want to get tongue-tied or potentially say the wrong thing, but <clears throat> soft batch cookie is one phrase that I think when you hear it, you're like, oh, I know what he means. You may even know a guy or a player that fits that description. Cool. And there's also a lot of people out there, and I would love to talk to coaches and get their opinion about the transfer portal. Do you think players are soft for going to the portal? I don't think every, I don't think a lot of players are soft for going to the portal. I think a lot of them uh, are going for the right reasons, but there are a lot of players that don't want to compete. The school they're at might have been the right school for them the entire time, but all of a sudden, when competition comes up, oh, we back it up. Oh, we not doing that. Oh, we are not going that far. Why? They don't want to compete. How do you get to Ohio State in the first place? Competing. How do you get on the field to work at in the first place? Competing. Speaking of competing, we're about to close up shop. One player that stood out and is one that continues to be one that is making waves and noise during the spring practice session right now is CJ Hicks. CJ Hicks has had to work. If it were up to the fans in Ohio, a lot of Ohio State fans that live in Ohio say, hey, he's an Ohio kid. He is a linebacker. He is talented. You play him year one. But if he's not ready to play year one, it doesn't matter where he is from. you got to put the right guys out there that are going to do the best job to accomplish the goal. That is it. What happened last year? Jim Knowles even said, hey, he's flashing. we got to find a way to get him on the field. All of this stuff. What happened? He had to grind some more to get on the field. Yes, the stars were next to his name. He was a highly recruited guy in Ohio. He was a target for the Buckeyes, and all of those things are true. However, that doesn't eliminate his path to get on the field. I do believe he'll play. Um, I part of me I hopes he starts. I know the Sunny Styles is going to be there too, but trust me, I, <laughs> Hicks Hicks should be good. And it wouldn't shock me if at some point Simon does not start in his Styles and Hicks that are starting because they're just too good to take off the field. Hicks had to work. Lachlan had to work. Lachlan even had to even gave credit to Dan Lanning for the work that he had to put in to get to where he wants to go. And he's not going to give any handouts. You got to earn it. You got to work for it. And y'all, that's my kind of coach. I am so glad to be back. And this is take two on the show. Take one, literally went through the entire show. All of a sudden, the audio was messed up again. And I said, oh, no, no, no. We're not doing this again. We're not putting out a show with no bad audio. Oh, no, sir, we, Bob. We're going to fix that before we put this out for Buckeye fans to enjoy here on this fine Tuesday. Locked on has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on the YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. You can follow me on X at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. Buckeyes got a new running backs coach. He's a good one. We'll see you next time.